When we moved into this new build house a few years ago, this yard looked nothing more than a pile of dirt. We actually lived like that for the first year, but year two is when we brought in landscapers and turned the dirt into mostly grass. We also added a few trees and bushes here and there for some added vegetation, but it was mostly just grass. Well, here we are in the third year in our home, and we're realizing that maybe putting 1,200 square feet of grass wasn't the most practical idea for our family. We have two dogs who like to claim the entire yard as their own, which is fine for us, but not so much our grass. We do like having grass for our kids and animals to run around and play on, but we may have been a little in over our heads with the huge amount of square footage that we got. And honestly, we just can't keep up with it all. So today we're breaking up the yard by adding in a garden, garden shed, and a cobblestone walking path that trails through the whole yard, making it easy to access all the growing foods in our garden, as well as any extra supplies we'll need to store in the shed. Eventually, I pictured tons of bushes and flowers and big oak trees surrounding this path, maybe a few arch trellises and a cute garden swing, and we will get there and make it our secret garden eventually, one day. But today, we're gonna focus on making our path, building our shed, and we're gonna start planting our seeds and gardening because we have to start somewhere. First things first, we're gonna set up our new garden shed. This is gonna be the anchor for our path and raised garden beds. This shed is by the brand Patio Well and it's the eight by six size. And this is pretty cool because it's called a kick it shed. So you literally just kick in the pieces together while you're assembling it. I guess this makes it so you use less screws in the end and it just makes the whole thing, um, the whole setting up process a lot easier. You can see Nick literally kicking the sides of the shed in place in these videos and according to him, this was the easiest part of the whole setup. Once all the sides are kicked in, you secure it with this metal bracket to keep everything tight in place. We're planning to use this shed to store all of our gardening supplies and any yard equipment that we need on hand. I also wanna make the shed pretty kid friendly so my kids can also use it as a little playhouse for whenever they're playing in the backyard. Now that the bones of the shed are built, Nick's gonna move it to where we want it in the yard so we can start drawing out the path leading to it. We put it on this side of the yard because this side gets the most sun and this is also where our garden's gonna be so it just makes the most sense to have it on this side. So now we're gonna start drawing out the path that's leading to the shed. We're using a hose to help guide the outer edges of the path so we're not just completely winging it when we trace it out. I'm using a white spray paint to trace the hose all the way to the shed and I'm just repeating that process all the way back. For the corners, we used a four foot level as a guide to keep everything even. And this worked great to follow along the whole path because we made this path the same width as the shed doors, which is about four feet wide. The level is also four feet wide, so this was a great kind of guide to make sure the path was even all the way around. I'm also tracing out the shed and leaving about six inches on each side of the shed just so we have enough room for the gravel to be fully leveled out. Now we're gonna use this edger slash trencher to cut along the white lines. This is a cool little machine that just cuts down the middle of grass, super, super smooth and easy, so we can get a clean line for our path. This thing was definitely worth the small investment for this project because it seriously saved us so much time and effort. Nick traced out the edges with this little machine and then also used it in a grid pattern inside of the path so he could take out the little chunks of grass a lot easier.
For the base of our shed, we need to have it on a level surface. So we're taking all the grass out that's in our rectangle that we traced and we're raking the dirt smooth and removing any excess dirt as well. It's really important for the shed to be on a level surface. So the bottom part of the shed is flat, so it all has proper drainage throughout the shed. So we're gonna layer two bags of paper sand on top and then this will help level out the dirt and give a more even base for the gravel to rest on. I'm going in with a tamp to pack all the sand down so it fills in any extra air pocket. And also this helps with the whole leveling process. So the floor and everything is even when you step on it. We're now adding a weed barrier on top of the sand so we don't get any unwanted plants growing through the bottom of the shed. You're supposed to secure this down with some stakes, but honestly, we just got lazy and just used the pea gravel that we were using as a weight to hold down the tarps. And we clearly didn't get enough gravel here, so we're definitely gonna go need to get a few more bags, but I mean, we might as well keep working because we have a lot more work to do. So let's get to making our cobblestone path. Working on our path now, Nick is using this landscape edging to make a boundary for the cement and rocks that we're using to make this whole path. This was super, super easy to install and it's bendable plastic. So it's way more safe than those metal ones. Our dogs always tend to cut themselves like their paws on the metal ones if we ever have those in our yard. So we always opt for a more safer plasticky option like these. These are also way shorter in size, so it hides in the grass better so you can really barely even see it, which I like a lot. Now we're gonna make a little paste to help keep all the cobblestones in place. We're using a mixture of Quick Creek concrete mix, sand, and water for this. You wanna keep slowly adding water in and give it a really good mix until it's a thick paste-like consistency. You wanna make sure it's pasty, but not too wet because then the concrete might stain the rocks and that is not what we want. I tried doing this a few different ways to figure out the fastest and easiest route to do this and you'll see in just a minute how my strategy changes to make this process go even smoother. This was a whole trial and error process this path, but I'm here to share all the details with you, what worked and what didn't. You'll see in just a minute how my strategy when placing these rocks changes just a little bit to make this process go even smoother and faster. Also, you guys, please wear gloves while you are working with concrete. I genuinely had no idea that it was to so toxic for your skin and I was handling it like it was sand and I was just playing with the dirt. I just guess it went completely in over my head that you're not supposed to um, touch concrete with your hands. I ended up getting chemical burns on some of my fingers and after a few days of working with this stuff and after looking it up, what do you know, concrete is not just dirt and it should not be touched. So don't make my mistake and please, please, please wear gloves. My hands are totally fine now, by the way. They are 100% healed and better, but I just wanted to point that out. I already know I'm gonna get comments saying I'm stupid and I need to wear gloves and just wanted to beat you to it. I know. I know I am. Don't you think the times are coming when it feels so right to dance in the This whole rock laying process was very, very tedious and it took a few days and a lot of time and sun and effort. Um, we actually got all of these cobblestones from our yard. That These were already in our yard already. So that part was completely free for us. And we ended up using about 10 bags of concrete total, which are about five to $6 per bag. So I feel like we did this entire path for so, so cheap. Considering that this path in total is 200 square feet, feet and we did it for less than a hundred dollars i feel like that is super super good and although it takes some time and it's tedious it i love the way it looks and it's just a great affordable option that adds a lot of character and this is about the time where my hands started burning and i started getting blisters so we stopped with the path for now and we will come back to finish it later after we you know get some gloves and some safety equipment we still need to put a layer of mortar on top to seal everything in just so the rocks don't move around and so everything stays in place. But we're gonna do that after we finish the entire cobblestone path next video.
Now let's finish building this patio well shed. I love the design of this guy. It's an off white grayish color, super, super pretty. And the vertical paneling of it matches our house great. I love it. The roof was easy to put on too. There's a few parts like the roof and the doors that require two people, but I mean, it can mostly be installed just with one person. The metal part of the roof goes on top and the black roof panels lay on top of that and then just get secured in with some screws. And the doors are pretty easy to install too. The brackets just go into the little holes and you secured it in place in the right position where the door needs to be. Overall, this is what the shed looks like in the end. I think it's cute like this, very neutral. And I love the little window to bring in some light, lots of space inside too. I wanna dress up the shed a little bit though and add some cute accessories and a little planter box to the window and maybe the doors too. But we're gonna do that in part two as it will be included in the finishing touches of this whole makeover. I can't wait to turn the inside of the shed into a little garden station and also a little playhouse for my kiddos. We're gonna add a rug, make it all cozy, and it's gonna look so good in the end. The last thing we're gonna do today is start planting our garden because I would love for our veggies and herbs to be ready to harvest by the fall. <laughs> we're starting with two garden beds here, but we plan to add more down the path just as time goes on, but two is plenty for now. One box I'm using for herbs and the other I'm using for veggies and some fruit as well. We got these raised planter beds from Amazon and they were pretty affordable, really easy to set up and we calculated out the price and it was the same price to just get this planter bed than it would have been if we were to purchase the lumber and build it ourselves. So we figured might as well just get this and follow the directions while building it, which made it a lot easier. I'm using fresh potting soil to fill the beds up first and then I'll plant everything and add even more fresh soil to any sparse areas that need it. Dogma synonym Get away from me Yardstick ball This bed has a few peppers that are already growing, but the rest of the box I'm going to save for some seeds. We have onion seeds, green beans, lettuce, cucumbers, and watermelon seeds in the rest of the bed, so I know it may look a little empty now, but in about a month or two, this bed will be just as green, sprouted, and beautiful as the other one. Okay. I found gold in the ashtray Honey on the knife blade, I got a new cannon. Everything is looking good so far and we have definitely made a huge dent in our yard. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next video where we finish our cobblestone path, add in a garden swing, plants tons of trees and bushes, and decorate our cute new garden shed. We're just gonna finish everything off and make this makeover worthwhile. Thank you to Patio Well for sponsoring today's video. I will leave the link to the eight x six shed we use down below in the description box. Thanks for watching everyone. We will see you next week while we continue on with our backyard garden makeover. Welcome.